Hey, what's going on guys? Cameron from RMM here. Today we're going to be walking you through the installation of the upgraded hardware kit that we just sent out. To do this installation, you're going to need a 13 millimeter open end wrench, a two and a half millimeter hex key, a four millimeter hex key, your bag of hardware that we sent, some type of marking tool. This is a metal scribe. You can also just use a pencil. This is an automatic center punch. You don't have to have one of those. You could also get away with just using a hammer and the end of a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll need a flathead screwdriver, slip joint pliers and needle nose pliers. These are pretty helpful. These are just a small set of needle nose vice grips, but you don't have to have those. And you will definitely need some type of cordless or corded drill to install the chain tensioner. All right, first we're just gonna go over what's in this bag here. This is just a little note I included that tells you what's in there and also make sure to go to the website for the video. This is our drill guide template. We'll use that in a moment. This is the drill bit you're gonna use. Sticker. This is the new set screw with the nylon thread locker. A pair of washers to swap out the toothed washers. This is a bolt we're adding to brace the bracket to give it a little bit less flex. And this is the chain tensioner. We were going to make some type of spacer, but we realized pretty quickly with the chain stretch and the variability in different setups, it would be impossible to make a one size fits all spacer. So we're going to give you something adjustable that you can adjust to your needs over time, depending on chain stretch and your specific setup. All right, to get started, first remove your batteries if you haven't already, don't wanna have any accidents. Then you're going to come over here. Now, if you have the front roller kit, you won't need to do this, um, but this is the stock wheel setup. So basically take your flathead. You can see there's two little cutouts in the C-clip and you're basically just going to pry up until it pops off. Remove that and set it aside. Then you'll just basically lift up on the mower slightly and slide that right off. Now you'll notice that I have a towel here. That's just to keep this from sliding around on me and also to protect the reel as it's kind of sitting on the workbench here. The next thing that we're going to do is remove the motor. So you'll come over here and loosen the four millimeter motor mount bolts. And you can kind of support this with your hand a little bit to take the tension off the screws here. And basically you're just gonna remove those fully. All right, we're gonna go ahead and toss these lock washers and we're gonna grab the washers that are in the hardware kit. These are just flat washers. This is what we used on the original kits. I, I tape these together. The easiest way to do it is just to cut it with some scissors or a utility knife. Pop those out. And then we're just going to slip those over our bolts here. Okay, set those aside for later. We're gonna remove the chain, set that aside, and then take the motor out here. And you can just hang that off the back there. Shouldn't be a problem. If you need to, you can tip the mower back and just set the handlebars on your work surface. The next thing that we're gonna do is remove the set screw from the reel. So just rotate it around carefully. Be careful, this is sharp. And we're taking out, not the long screw that goes through the axle, but the small set screw. You might've even noticed this is loosened up since you've been using it, which is part of the reason that we're replacing it. Take that out, set it aside. Then you're gonna grab your new socket cap screw that has the nylon thread locker pre-installed and go ahead and thread it in there it's a little bit easier to do it with the wrench all 
you'll feel that nylon thread locker engage. And one thing that you want to make sure and do right now why this is somewhat loose is make sure that this is pulled all the way out this way. This bolt prevents it from coming off or moving side to side, but there's a tiny bit of play there in that slot on that shaft. And so we want to make sure this is pulled this way as much as possible because it's better for the alignment with the motor sprocket up here. So go ahead and just tighten this down. It's gonna be a little bit stiff, but that's kind of the point. Just continue to work it down in there. And basically you're just gonna go until it bottoms out fully. This is a four millimeter hex key, by the way. Once that's tight, should be good to go. Next, we're going to be installing this long bracing bolt. And the concept here is we're going to remove this motor bracket bolt and replace it with this longer one. And it goes all the way down and braces off of the stock mower frame. What this is gonna do is basically eliminate a lot of the flex that the bracket has. We intentionally gave it some flex just so that the chain wouldn't break if you ever encountered, encountered hard resistance, but this is going to just stiffen this up a bit to lessen the likelihood of the chain possibly coming off, but that will mostly be taken care of by the tensioner that we're going to install momentarily. All right, take this front bolt out here. Go ahead and thread in this new one. It should be a pretty good fit with the washer we've included. Um, depending on your setup, we'll go over what the fitment is supposed to be like. But basically, you want the bottom of this bolt contacting the frame. If it looks like it's too high, you can just take the washer out, but most setups will use the washer. So basically, once you verify that it's touching, you just wanna tighten this nice and tight. Don't go too crazy, because this is aluminum, but it should be able to get pretty tight. And that's all you gotta do. Next, we're going to install the tensioner. Get into the fun part, pulling the drill out. For this step, we're gonna go ahead and slide this wheel back on. It's just gonna give us more stability while we're drilling. So go ahead and grab the paper alignment template. And all you gotta do is basically line up the paper template like so. You want the long edge on the front edge and the short edge on the side here. So basically just square it up to the edge and then we're going to mark this corner right here. This doesn't have to be super perfect. You just want it as close to that corner as you can get it, but it could be slightly off and be totally fine. All right, so once you have your mark there, if you have a center punch tool, you can go ahead and take it and put it in the center of your mark. And if you don't have a center punch tool, just take a Phillips head screwdriver and tap it. And that will basically get you a mark where you want it. So take the drill bit, chuck it up in your drill, and let's get to drilling here. You can take your time on this, aluminum's pretty soft, you don't gotta go crazy, it should 
should get through pretty easily. What is important though, is that you make sure that you're not drilling at an angle, either this way or this way. So make sure that you're straight up and down by looking at the bit from the side and also this side as you're drilling and just go nice and slow. And just vacuum, vacuuming up the metal shavings real quick. You can also just use a air compressor or blow them out of the way, but um, it's best if you can clean them up. Okay, to install the tensioner, basically you just need to remove the bolt on, or the nut on the bottom. Should look like this here and then you're going to just slip it down in the hole. Make sure that this nut on top is completely tight to the top of the bolt there. If it won't go through, you might need to use the drill bit to kind of aug it out a little bit, but it should be pretty easy to get it to fit in there. Like so. Now you can go ahead and thread this bottom nut on just a little bit but you just want to leave it loose for now. All right, now that that's installed, you can go ahead and grab your motor, place it back there. You can put your chain on. Now, since the tensioner is on here now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult if you have a new chain. If your chain has been stretched out, uh, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if you have issues getting it on, basically what you'll have to do is just kind of roll the reel and the chain will pop onto the gears. It should be pretty simple though. If you have any issues with that, feel free to reach out and we can try to explain that, but it should be pretty easy to get on there. Go ahead and thread in your motor mount bolts. Make sure that you're in the right holes, otherwise it will bottom out pretty quickly. The way you can do that is make sure that these vent holes are lined up. Okay, go ahead and get those kind of hand tight. Now there's a specific way you wanna do this to make sure it's the easiest. What I recommend is basically just grabbing the motor underneath and go ahead and just kind of get it hand tight, pull the motor up just as tight as you can, nothing crazy, and go ahead and snug these up. Not anything super tight, just kind of enough to hold the motor. And then you're going to want to come under here and push this all the way up till it's touching the motor and then spin this nut down to where it's all the way as far down as you can get it. That way it's nice and close so that you don't have to sit in there with a the wrench and turn it several times to get it pretty close to tight. Now what we're gonna do is basically just barely loosen these, just enough to where the motor can slide up and down, but not to where it's like shaking around. So just barely, barely loose. The next thing you're gonna need is your 13 millimeter box wrench and a pair of needle nose pliers. All right, the easiest way to tighten the tensioner once you have these bolts just slightly loose is to go from the back side right through here and grab the top of the nut with your needle nose pliers. This is the best angle right through there like that. Okay, and then you're gonna come around to the front Take your 13 millimeter wrench and you're going to turn this nut clockwise while holding the bolt. And you can see that that's tightening up the chain. Okay, getting tighter. All right, 
So basically, as far as the chain tension, what you want to see is in the middle, about a quarter inch of deflection, which means from straight, you can push it in about a quarter of an inch. All right, once you've gotten the chain tensioner set where there's about a quarter inch of play here, go ahead and tighten these down nice and tight. And then we're going to secure the chain tensioner. The best way to do this is to come back from the back the same way, grip the nut here with your needle nose pliers and then slowly turn this nut until you get it nice and tight. This can be a little tricky because of the chains in the way. What I'm doing here is basically rotating it to change the angle of the open end, just kind of back and forth to get that little bit of play that's needed. And then you'll notice it's starting to tighten up and you want to tighten this pretty snug. You don't have to go crazy, but the, it could come loose with vibration. All right, it's almost tight. Should, all right, that should be good. All right, and just double check that your chain tension is still about a quarter inch. Make sure that the reel spins freely, that you don't have any issues. Go ahead and put your wheel back on if you're using stock wheels and there's a little bit of a trick to putting this on you basically just want to line it up right in this groove in the bolt here and then you'll take your needle nose pliers and just kind of clamp down and it'll pop in all right and you should be in business